gender critical people are a virus in society. Roll credits. Uh, da -da 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 -da. If you couldn't tell by the runtime of this video, the phrase gender critical people are a virus in society is a bit more complicated. I am one of the transgenders. <gasps> Therefore, consider this video my official scientific call out post to turf and gender critical organizations such as the malicious virus known as the LGB Alliance. Notice how I emphasized organizations. The focus of this video will not be on individual turf and gender critical activists, though it will have some mentions of prominent figures such as JK Rowling. I am here simply just to prove and explore the implications of one question. Do TERF and gender critical organizations act like a biological virus? I'm sure we all know about viruses in this day and age. But to recap, in practice, a virus does two things to the human body. One, it reproduces itself through infecting the host. And two, it fails to keep the host cells alive therefore killing them. A virus's only real goal is to reproduce. They do this by hijacking cells. A virus wants to stay alive so, you know, it can reproduce more. The, the goal of living things is to make more living things. But we know what viruses do to our bodies. They kill. And I will argue that turf and gender critical organizations do the same, not just with my fancy words, uh, an eloquent soliloquy, uh, endowed with a plethora of citations, but no, because I myself did research that was rejected from a publication. So I'm salty and turning it into a YouTube video. Anyways, this video goes over a lot of big brain concepts and I have a lot to explain in order to make the topics I'm covering dissectable and digestible. A lot of time and effort goes into videos such as this one, so if you enjoy this kind of content, please, please, please consider subscribing and supporting me on patreon.com slash skymocha. This video will be split into three parts. One, an introduction going over what TERF and gender critical movements are. Whether you know next to nothing about TERF and gender critical groups, or are, say, a reporter on them, certain framing devices I use to talk about these groups become important later on in the video, and I would argue they are interesting and unique ways to discuss and understand TERF and gender critical communities and ideologies in a better manner, specifically the framings of new conspiracism, uh, delegitimization, common sense, uh, the concept of TES versus TERF, and gendering. Second section, methodology results and discussion. Typically in a paper, this would be an incredibly long three sections, but uh, most of you they don't, you don't care enough to watch that. I'm assuming you're here for the who, what, when, where, and why, N not really the how. There is a paper version of this video with an extended and technical methodology, results and discussion sections in the description down below. If you'd like an in-depth explanation of my research, such as uh, what characters I cleaned using regex or what libraries I used to lemonize my text. God, I love that word. Lemonize. Three, the conclusion, or what I like to term the, oh God, oh no, don't go there section. Now let's get to work. Capitalism, baby. God, speaking of capitalism, I really, I really need my capitalism drink right about now. My, uh, my, my, my coffee. <laughs> oh, Oh, I hate that. I didn't put any sugar. Us gays are systematically discriminated against. You know what's... Sorry, Blahage. <sighs> Peep the citation in the top left, and this article, and this article, and the shooting at Club Q that happened a few weeks ago, and the senators who voted to criminalize same-sex marriage, take all of Texas, and their every inch closer to transgenocide and take Matt Walsh and also take Ben Shapiro and take TV dinner Baron Tucker Carlson 
you get the point. There are countless anti-gay and anti-trans hate groups in just the United States alone, and this inevitably involves the purpose of these groups, a uh, perpetuation of hate. Not always necessarily through hate crimes. A perpetuation of systemic oppression of queer and trans individuals is a far more pervasive and even far more dangerous form of violence from these groups. Any trans person like myself can talk about this anecdotally, but this violence has been historically under research and under report. The TERF and gender critical community are not officially one of these groups, but they do propagate hate and are often vectors for other hate ideologies such as anti-Semitism. So what is a TERF? This explanation will encompass uh, aspects relevant whether you are an expert or know nothing about TERFs. The term TERF is short for a trans exclusionary radical feminists. They believe the concepts of womanhood and manhood are strictly a binary based on the sex someone is assigned at, at birth. Like, you know, women don't burp. This is their core belief, a belief in sex, not gender, despite both being scientific facts that don't require belief. This goes against decades of feminist scholarship and feminist ideology, but what it does do is something incredibly important sociologically speaking. It serves to simplify the concept of gendering, something that is understandably an incredibly comfortable an incredibly comforting and appealing idea shut up phone before i get to that i want to touch on something else turfs they shouldn't be called turfs despite being commonly referred to as these trans exclusionary radical feminists they're not feminists nor are they radical feminists instead of fighting for feminist ideologies they instead seek to separate themselves from feminist ideology by excluding trans individuals. The label trans exclusionary separatist or TES is a more fitting title for this. In reframing TERFs as TES, the links and similarities between the gender critical movement, an active delegitimization of trans individuals, and TES, an active separatist movement to delegitimize trans individuals, become a little bit more clear in my opinion. They're both framed in different ways, but their ultimate goals are the same, the delegitimization of trans individuals. I'm not going to be using the term TERF throughout the rest of this video and probably even in future videos, neither the gender critical ideology or TES slash TERF ideology are anywhere near feminism. Let's get back to why TES and GC groups may find a simplified concept of gendering comforting. Scholarly scholar Patricia Martin defines gendering or practicing gender as a system of action that is institutionalized and widely recognized, but is also dynamic, emergent, local, variable, and shifting. Transgender individuals fall outside of institutionalized and widely recognized gender roles and are part of an emergent, shifting, and more inclusive view of gender. A rigid view of sex as prioritized over gender in the minds of TES and GC groups is honestly understandable, as a lot of the scholarship on sociology and uh, gendering finds heteronormativity and gendered power are learned in children as early as the age of three. Gender power is the notion that men have both sexual and societal power over women, and I did not misspeak when I said it is learned between the ages of 3 to 5. It's typically learned by which behaviors are and aren't allowed for each sex in U.S. preschools, and Ganson, the scholar who found this out, found that when a boy kisses a girl without consent in preschool, it's a cute show of affection, but when a girl does it, it's abnormal. Fun times we live in. With gendered power so prevalent and feminism being, you know, against gendered power, it's almost inevitable that a small subsection of the feminist movement who strictly adhere to binarized notions of sex rather than gender would form. I, I don't agree with this view as it's factually wrong, but from this perspective, trans women are a threat to women and women's spaces as well as a worldview that is strictly binary. TES ideology inevitably centers on one 
point. Benevolent sexism, primarily white women in TES ideology, are positioned as the weaker sex and in need of protection from men. It plays into notions of female fragility and white female fragility, and from this viewpoint, giving assigned male at birth trans feminine individuals autonomy and self-determination poses a threat to cis women. It creates a binarized notion of not just male and female, but a dichotomy of victims and aggressors. Many TES and gender critical individuals have been victims of gendered power, such as assault, and can find comfort in this binarized view of aggressors versus those who are safe. This is a topic me and Political Psych with Abby will be discussing in a future video. Subscribe for that. The ideas of safe and comfort is consequently what trans people also seek by being included in feminist ideology in women's spaces. It's not a valid idea that TES and gender critical groups think trans women are not safe. But I do understand why that thought process exists in some of these individuals and why I hope we come to a point where all of society is inclusive of trans femmes and also trans masks, I guess, so we feel safe. That was a joke, okay, please. Online spaces such as Twitter can serve as a space for affirmation and unity within trans and minority communities. So keep in mind that no matter how much I bash online communities, we all know that a closely knit trans group is called a Discord server. Fellow YouTuber Kaylin Conrad in their three-part series, Gender Critical Inside a Cult, went over the three-step process of how a TES is created. One, they are indoctrinated to TES ideology through concepts of fear and disgust. This often goes into the concept of common sense, a powerful tool for indoctrination into these communities and a powerful vector for spreading new conspiracism, as I will get to later. Two, they are convinced to practice their TES beliefs, primarily through engaging in therapy of their family members and also communities. And three, they are encouraged to perpetuate TES ideology to other individuals, organizations, and even government institutions. The TES and gender critical movements are social movements, often overlapping with conservative and alt-right movements, existing for the purpose of silencing transgender individuals, both through systematic discrimination, so our time is spent you know, trying to stay alive, or overriding what our causes are. Online spaces such as Twitter or Reddit serve as a vector for facilitating the spread of political movements and protests for groups at all points of a political spectrum. Research on r slash men's rights, a movement and subreddit antithetical to feminism shows there are two patterns to posts widely shared on the website, sorry, on the subreddit. The first is online posts on the subreddit gain more traction, such as, you know, updates or comments. When the audience of the post is angered or disgusted, the second is a perceived pervasiveness of feminism throughout society's institutions. Events such as hashtag Gamergate led directly to an explosion of the men's rights movement and other manosphere communities as they believe feminism acts as a sort of Orwellian big brother pervasive throughout the whole government and also the video game industry and aha, I cited myself, fight me! I will do it again. Certain patterns are initially evident when comparing the men's rights movement to the gender critical movement, primarily links to the perceived pervasiveness, not of feminism, but of trans people. In Jesse Gender's YouTube video analyzing the rhetoric of Daily Wire host Matt Walsh's What is a Woman, she overviews how right-wing and TES talking heads distort reality to make it seem as if trans women have power in society. TES or GCs and conservatives perpetuate the idea that trans individuals hold vast and disproportional amounts of power, and among that power is the ability to silence dissenting voices such as TES, GCs, conservatives. There is a perceived 
pervasiveness of trans people in society's institutions, and trans people use this to silence the quote-unquote truly marginalized, the uh, TESs, despite TESs holding the majority opinion that gender is primarily determined by sex. As a result, TESs have the popular support to silence online transgender rights activists on platforms like Twitter, and TES's ability to claim silencing only really shows that they are themselves not silenced. These ideas of pervasiveness and silencing go hand in hand, and one cannot exist without the other. TES and GCs are silenced because of their claim trans people are pervasive, when in reality this could not be further from the truth. Preliminary research on this project in regards to two public figures' posts regarding uh, TES and GC ideology showcased the concept of concern, and I cited myself! Told you I was gonna do it again. A large majority of discriminatory movements and conspiracy groups use the framing of questions and concerns to present their ideas. Rosenblum and Murahid, 2022, explain the concept of conspiracy without the theory. It is a type of conspiracy that seeks to perpetuate itself through the sheer repetition of the people who believe it for the sake of delegitimizing primarily political parties and information institutions, i.e. the news institutions or universities, etc. Though Rosenblum and Murray Heed have received criticism, for example, their hyperfixation on the present U.S. moment leading to a blind spot in new conspiracism, not particularly being new, or how they engage in certain degrees of ascribing intentionality to movements that they claim are not intentionally created, a lot of people are saying the book they wrote offers an incredibly insightful look into the dangers of repetition. In this regard, TES and GC ideology offers striking parallels to new conspiracism, which makes sense considering influential TES and GC speakers often align themselves with new conspiratorial figures in white supremacist and alt-right circles. TES and white supremacist circles propel these new conspiratorial narratives by making the issue of trans people in society disproportional and intentional. Conspiracy theories serve to explain topics that seem too big to be just coincidence and that there must be more to it. The the entirety of trans individuals are framed as trans activists acting intentionally to spread a political agenda rather than the reality. People who are often just trying to live their lives in societies hostile to our existence. TES's conspiracy without the theory serves not to delegitimize political institutions or information institutions, but to delegitimize, delegitimize a marginal population. Matt Walsh and other right-wing or TES-adjacent groups frame attacks on trans individuals, including attacks on Boston Children's Hospital and a uh, new conspiratorial light. We're just asking questions. This can leverage people's confirmation bias and the idea that people look towards information that confirms their prejudice. This, a lot of the time, relies on the concept of common sense, a topic so big in and of itself, I recommend you watch Kaylin Conrad's videos on GCs to learn more. When Matt Walsh asks questions with a presupposed answer and relies on common sense, it can take someone from an implicit prejudice to an explicit prejudice. This also creates countless grifters such as Ben Shapiro or Matt Walsh, who whether they believe in their grift or not, exist to further anti-trans new conspiracism for the purpose of their own profit. They create these questions also serving as innuendo, acting to delegitimize trans individuals' autonomy and human rights. Verbal attacks, such as that on Boston's Children's Hospital, lead to the delegitimization of gender-affirming institutions through baseless claiming that toddlers are put on a path to sterilization and butchery. As Rosenblum and Murray Heed, as well as Falcons, point out, 
Twitter's relatively low barrier to entry leads to further repetition of new conspiratorial claims, and with the accumulation of countless retweets, claims such as a lot of people are saying gain more support. And the issue with these claims is that they only ever need to be true enough, all leading to pure repetition without any self criticism. This will typically lead these claims to have no logic, consistency, coherence, or tie to reality, just the idea that they are true enough. Twitter and online platforms are vital to the repetition, reproduction, and perpetuation of TES and gender critical ideology. So this research I'm about to get into hopes to strengthen already existing research on how to analyze and combat TES and GC ideology. It serves as framing TES and GC ideology in a unique light as a sort of virus whose only purpose is to recreate itself and colonize the hearts minds the hearts and minds of individuals in a way likely similar to that of an alt-right pipeline and like a virus there is likely not one individual or shadowy group who controls this process as is the pitfall Murahid and Rosenblum fall into like a virus there is likely no single brain just an almost instinct to reproduce and perpetuate this is what I hope to better explore and understand as a Theory. For the research part of this research, I'm going to use Twitter to find the prominence of certain TES and GC concerns. This was done using a data analysis and natural language processing method called latent derelict analysis. God, that sounds like a... Like a, like a Doctor Who thing. Using Twitter's API, I gathered all tweets by LGB Alliance, LGB Fight Back, and Sex Not Gender, leading to a combined 6,777 tweets. The text of these tweets were uh, combined and then cleaned so that 83,000 words remained for data analysis. This means that out of 83,000 words, they would each be split into sentences and based on the prevalence of how often keywords appear within each sentence, a list of uh, topic numbers with correlated keywords would be formed uh, based on the... <sighs> based on research done on r slash men's rights, these tweets were categorized by complaint or grievance and then organized by community support. With some uh, editing and working on LDA, I'm not going more depth. If you want to figure out what a log likelihood or perplexity value is, just read the paper in the description. I found some interesting results. Among LGB Alliance and LGB Fight Back, there were two main topics. One, gratitude from organizations to the TES and GC communities and the recruitment of new individuals and new members. And two, gender identity as an issue impacting lesbians, children, and quote-unquote women's rights. Meanwhile, for Sex Not Gender, their focus was on two new topics. Three, discrimination monitoring, claiming that TES and GC individuals are portrayed badly by the media are fired from jobs and sex not gender is attempting to monitor this discrimination against the TS and GC communities. Four, dichotomies. Focusing on sex as a binary of male and female, of abuser and victim, of protector and protected with trans individuals falling in as an anomaly. To start off, let's focus on sex not gender. This account is sort of an outlier as it focuses is completely different from the other two. At sex not gender underscore focuses on the lack of a term gender within the Equality Act, hoping to enforce a strict binary of male and female, where trans individuals are born in a binary, then work towards achieving the other binary. This categorization serves to validate transgender individuals but only through rigorous gatekeeping of medical procedures through the concept of gender dysphoria and an invalidation of non-binary individuals. This is sometimes called transmedicalism. Their experiments might discount sex not gender, then restrict the number of LDA topics to two or three, but I believe it's important to also include topics three and four, as well as sex not gender, to exemplify the differences between accounts focused on reproduction and accounts focused on education 
and resistance. Their form of education is reinforcing the dichotomy of male and female while also backing up their quote-unquote educational materials with skewed and mischaracterized statistics. This can even be exampled in the news media that is traditionally considered to be reputable, such as the BBC's article, We're Being Pressured Into Sex by Some Trans Women. Their resistance takes the form of equality monitoring, directly framing themselves as a grassroots political organization that enforces the Equality Act as a strict binary, not a protection of gender. From the research I did, these organizations combined to serve four main goals. I think it's important to think of these as goals rather than individual topics of discussion these organizations engage in. The goals are, one, to perpetuate themselves through conferences and meetings. This is the primary goal for an organization such as uh, the LGB Alliance and is an important objective for an organization such as LGB Fight Back. These organizations regularly engage in giving gratitude to those who spread TES and GC ideology. Two, to pose trans individuals as an issue or to delegitimize trans individuals. There is a presupposition that trans individuals are prevalent enough in society to pose a threat to any other marginalized communities. Based on the collected tweets, this topic focuses on emotions of anger, disgust, and fear to perpetuate TES and GC ideology. Tweets labeled with this topic also use strong keywords such as right, either with the connotation of correct or the connotation of civil liberties, and often engages in framing trans people as child users, for example, through framing puberty blockers as butchery, sterilization, or chemical, and framing education on the existence of trans people to children as a form of indoctrination or This directly engages in the of trans identities as is antithetical to protecting children as Bill says Don't Say Gay actively target three to five-year-olds who are already learning about culture in American society. This repetition of mischaracterizations serves to delegitimize trans individuals. Three, to monitor discrimination and harassment against TES and GC communities. This serves to protect it against their perceived silencing and perpetuate the idea that this is actually happening. And four, to enforce the dichotomy between male and female through repetition and delegitimization efforts. I need my emotional support shark to, to, um, to get through this section. Being Bigotry is a pernicious and tenacious virus for which no one has yet found a cure. This is just as true for TES and GC movements as it is for any other hate group. TES and GC organizations such as the LGB Alliance have two main goals outlined in the video to reproduce and to delegitimize. In this sense, they are like a virus. TES and GC groups hijack individual sensibilities, ranging conservatives to heterosexual women to queer women, uh, such as get the L out to trans individuals, such as Blair White. Once hijacked, the goal is to reproduce. This is really well outlined by Kaylin Conrad and evident from how accounts such as at Alliance uh, GB focus primarily their efforts on reproduce production, and inevitably, like many viruses, the TES and GC virus also harms the host. This would need more studying, but I argue this is important to understanding how the TES and GC hate group movement grows. New conspiratorial claims, such as the ones on the right or TES and GC groups engage in, do not replace the existing agenda with a new one. They only serve to delegitimize and harm. This does, however, open a door for malicious actors who hope to capitalize off of the hate by offering a final solution. This final solution, as articulated online, is a pipeline where online sayings inevitably lead to offline extremism, and as many point out, conservatives, TES, and GC groups are already gearing up and continuing a path of extermination. Transgender individuals suffer lifelong exposure to a both psychological and physical, and are actively discriminated against by the healthcare industry. They are portrayed as unable to be around children, are often targeted by conversion therapy efforts, and often have to resort to drastic measures to simply survive. Bans on puberty blockers or gender-affirming care to minors is 
quite literally an act of direct violence. As study after study prove in trans and non-binary youth drastically decreases with access to gender-affirming care. Forced erasure th of the trans community through this will only cause one outcome, death. Conservatives have the gas pedal on this form of violence, and it is actively supported by every moral panic the citizenship of the United States and other countries engage in. This violence is legitimized in part using the dele delegitimization from TES and GC groups. Bathroom bills, a debate on women's sports, attacks on healthcare and living conditions through government action accusations of and the countless talking points of TES and GC individuals serve to delegitimize a group all for the sake of presupposing the answer to the question is extermination. Thank you so much to Abby Johnson, Joey Schaefer for reading over my proposal for issues, feedback, and further reading. Thank you to my friend and writer Ash for helping proofread and contribute to this script. And finally, thank you to my professor, uh, Alex, for pointing out certain inconsistencies in my work and adding additional sources. Fabby. I love my Fabby.